Hi, so I'm going to do a demo of how to put molding into your SketchUp model. And as I kind of talked about in class, it's a really good idea to do this early on in the process before you put in um, a lot of your furniture, load in your materials. One, because it's just easier to get around the actual shape of the room without other things in the way. And also, um, as your models get bigger and bigger, things are going to slow down. And we'll talk about that in class. And I'm going to do a video about materials, too. So we'll, we'll have that separately. But right now, I'm in my SketchUp model. You can go to the warehouse. So over here, it's this icon where it's kind of this like um, kind of like hexagon kind of shape. And it says 3D warehouse. It's a blue icon. I've already got it open here where what I did is I went to my account, so that link that I sent you through um, our class announcements on Moodle, this will take you to my account. If you were looking, let me go back once, it might come up where all you see is if you're in the models tab, you're only going to see a chair. If you click on collections, this is where I'm hiding a lot of stuff, basically. I have lots of folders full of both professional jobs and school projects. These are all school projects up here. Um, and then some of these, like that's someone's real house there, like all the pieces we used. But next to it, here is molding. So if you like want to have a quick way to find baseboard molding, this is a good place to start. Um, you can always just type in molding up at the top or go through the building projects category too. They're gonna to have it also there. Um, this this picture here, if you see where it just looks like it's flat, that's that's the um, the molding profile, meaning the shape that it, that's gonna make the molding all around your house. It's easy though, if you're not quite sure what you want to start out with one of these like uh, here where it kind of shows it a little bit in 3D. So I'm gonna open that one up. And we'll download that one. Hopefully it won't take too long to open up. Let's see. There it comes. Okay, so this one's nice because it's um, they've pulled the profile a little bit so you can kind of see in 3D what's happening. Um, the base molding on this guy is mostly this one here. The rest of these are all different kinds of woodwork that we're going to talk about in materials class. But out of this set here, this one is an actual um, baseboard molding. So I'm going to copy that. I'll say control C. Then I'm going to go back over into this model and control V and I'm going to try to put it somewhere here on the floor. It's on face. Let's see. It might be twisted around here. Oh, no, there it is. Okay. So what I showed you earlier in class too is this is helpful because I can see what the molding is going to look like. It's fairly, you know, traditional. I'm going to right click on it and pick edit component. And I'm going to delete everything out except for this shape right here. That's my molding profile. The other thing we talked about in class is if you know what kind of um, finish you want on this, you can go ahead and paint it in now. So I'm going to do it a really obnoxious color just so you can see it. So I'm going to edit component to right click. Now, the way you paint objects in, it's almost like a paint by number. You go over to materials and here under materials, if you see this drop down menu, there's already a ton of preloaded things. So if you wanted to pick a species of wood, you could pick one there. I'm going to pick a really bright pink or something like that so we can see it really bright. Uh, let's, do, let's do something really obnoxious like that. All right, so we're going to paint that in there and let's see. All right, so that looks pretty good there. So you can kind of see it. And one of the things too, we want to copy this guy. So we're going to hit this, control C, control V. So I have two of them because you're probably going to use this um, at different sections in your room, depending on how your great rooms divide it up. So what will happen is once I edit this one, if I do not make it unique, this one will then make the same giant shape. So what you want to do is click on one of them, right click, I'm going to say make unique. So now this one is not linked to this one. They are separate blocks. Um, so this one now the one here that's kind of like the one I'm going to edit. I'm going to move way over here. And in my house, I think I talked about this will eventually be a, a fireplace wall. This was a real house we worked on. So I'm going to stick it right here. And in my house, it's going to go kind of uh, up to the left of the wall, across here and down here and stop at what would be the kitchen cabinets right there. Um, all right. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say edit component. Then I'm going to take the pencil tool and as part of this component, so I want to get right in the edge there. Actually, no, before we do any more, let's stop this. And I'm going to make sure he's totally on the ground. Okay, I think it is. It just looked like it might have been going down a little bit. So we're going to say edit component again, get the pencil, start at that bottom left corner, and I'm going to draw the perimeter of my room. So it's going to stop about there. 
and then it's going to go across the back wall here and then it's going to go over to about right there and i'll say escape so now this component if i kind of click off over here in space if i click on this guy down here again you'll see that those lines are now part of the component which is what we want so we're going to right click say edit component now what we want to use is what's called the follow me tool so i'm going to ask this shape to follow that path I just drew and see how it just lit up red that's a great sign it means it can read that you also want to see how I'm pivoting in and out you want to pivot out far enough that you can see the whole of your shape which is a little tricky and if you have a weird shape room let me know so right now using the follow me tool see how it's going along the left wall now the back wall and then we're going to see if we can get it to come around the corner and yep it did so let's see here we'll click over here now the interesting thing is it didn't go all pink on me so let me see let me try that again so i think what's the problem there is i have to probably paint pink on the other side just want to make sure we get this right so that when you're coloring it yeah so the white side is what it was pulling so let's make sure to paint both sides so super obnoxious pink there um sorry if you like pink i don't i don't hate it i just try to make it super bright all right so we're gonna have follow me pick the shape again and then follow the path that I made and it's going to go all the way around. Oh yeah, now it's real pink. All right, and there, there's my molding. And the nice thing is, see this piece is now unique in its own separate thing. So if I want to do this inner wall here, what I probably do with this guy is, let's see, here's the edge of it. It's going to start here and wrap itself around this wall so there's there's another one over here there's a wood one i'm gonna also we're gonna control c control v put another little extra one over here if i need it somewhere else in the room later right cl uh, left click on that right click then say make unique and now this one to edit component i'm gonna trace from this corner here I'm gonna go up to the wall here over here down and around here this is a very retro house the, the way this was laid out this poor kitchen all right we didn't have a lot of options here all right and then now we're gonna let's see do the follow me tool and we're getting this part here and we're bringing it whoops oh you know what we forgot to paint the other side of this one too so let me do that quick so we can really see the pink there um there it goes here all right i think i'm gonna have it follow from this angle just so i can see it a little better so i'm gonna hit follow me there going around the square going that way and once it lights up red like that it's showing you that everything's working and it understands the geometry and there we go and then at some point i'm gonna you know need to build this wall and pull this wall up but this wall is already set with its molding the nice thing is if you look closely how this wraps around it does a really nice job of creating this molding um in the way they actually cut it in the real world the way a, a skilled carpenter is gonna what's do these uh 45 degree angles which are called mitered corners so again like sketchup is smart enough to get the geometry of how to wrap your your molding around um, I don't think any of you have a house that's so traditional where you'd have crown molding, but crown molding is what uh, goes on the, the wall and connects to the ceiling. So you do really the very same technique of kind of following the path all along here. All right, and then when you're done, usually what I do is I, I still kind of keep this guy handy somewhere. And a lot of times in my drawings, I'll, I'll kind of have like a setup of a whole bunch of things over the right that are kind of like if I need to cut and paste later from. But this is how you get really fancy molding all over your house. Um, let me just show you really quickly if you're just doing a rectangle. So let me kind of, I'm going to delete this guy here. Oops, that was my whole wall. We don't want that. All right, there it is. So we're going to hit delete. Um, I would draw it somewhere over here. So if you're doing kind of a more modern house where your baseboard is really just like basically a plank of wood, I would get right on the red line here if you can. You're sort of, well, let's see. We're gonna draw a square um, going vertically, basically, or a rectangle going vertically. They're usually about one inches. So see how I'm on the green axis, meaning I'm I'm totally like horizontal right now. So I'm gonna type in one inch and it's really small. And now the blue axis is going up vertically. So I'll say four inches and then I'll go over one inch again on the green axis and then I'll go down and there's my little rectangle. 
Now in this case, why don't we'll paint it in with wood. So I'll kind of pick this like wood veneer here. Oh, that's bird's eye, that's a little too, that's really expensive. All right, so we're gonna put there, that'll be my wood. Um, I'm gonna make this a component again. So I'm gonna say make a component and I'll just say uh, base molding plane. All right, and now this one we're gonna bring over and actually again, we're gonna copy it just in case we're gonna need it in other parts of our house. So this one, we're also gonna make unique. So we're gonna click on it, oh, the little arrow there. So click, right click, say make unique. Now I'm gonna pull it over to, again, this part of the house. And this one's same concept. So I'll just do it real quick as kind of I narrate it. So I'm gonna right click and say edit component. I'm gonna trace my path again. And again, this time we're going around the room like that. And then over here, make sure I'm straight. Yep, all right, and then over here. You can see how it lights up like red to let me know I'm on the right kind of, that I'm still like, going horizontal and vertical. All right, now this guy right here, we're gonna do the follow me. And oops, it already kind of jumped there. Sometimes it'll do that on you if you click it too fast. So you're gonna click and kind of, there's the follow me tool, click on this. Oh, he just wants to jump right around there. Hold on, let's see, control Z trying to get it to not jump. Oh, there we go. All right. So I'm holding down the left part of my mouse and then I'm forcing it around the corner this way because otherwise it was kind of automatically trying to do it for me. All right. And if I zoom in, this is again, what would be a more modern kind of streamlined base molding. I might change that wood a little bit. It's not quite the right kind of grain for that. So let's see, we'll, we'll pick it again. So we'll say, this is a trick for material. So if we right click, we say edit component, Instead of painting every surface, I can left click on here, then right click and say, um, where is it? Select all same materials. So see how now they're all lit up. Now I can paint brush it and or paint bucket it and see how they all changed for me. So that's a nice quick way. And I'm gonna make another video of just sort of tricks for materials. You can also, um, usually with a component like this that you've made by yourself, you can paint, you can click on it and it'll paint the whole thing. Let me see, this guy's being a little difficult. So we'll say edit component. Um, yes, it's just doing it in pieces. So again, you wanna click on the material, right click and they say select all same material. So then all that bright pink lights up and whoops, oh, it didn't do it for me, did it? Let's see, we'll try this again. Right click, edit component, left click, then right click and say select all same material. And then, well, this one's being difficult, isn't it? All right, so this one we might have to paint piece by piece. If you get into stuff like this, ask me for help. I have a lot of experience of just kind of fussing with this stuff too. All right, so let's click over here. But yes, the best idea is honestly to paint it what you want at the get go, but then you can kind of edit it after the fact if you need to. All right, so I'm going to stop this video and then I will fire up another one to talk to you through how to do materials too.